Hey, it's Kimberly and welcome back to my channel. I make videos on all things lifestyle on a budget and I'm super excited to bring this video. I'm finally upgrading my phone. If you've been on my channel for a while, you know I have a whole bunch of videos throughout the years of me upgrading my phone back when I started with refurbished phones. Yes, I mentioned this is a budget lifestyle channel. One thing before we get into the video, it's not gonna be a tech review. This is not gonna be the specs, the breakdown, all of that. There's so many videos on that. This is your regular degular budget lifestyle girl giving you the review, so if that's something that you're interested let's keep on watching like I was saying before I am usually on the lower end of the phones I do refurbish I was always trying to keep it in the budget my most recent phone is the iPhone 12 mini I got this last year I've had it for about 18 months that was what my contract was and I decided to finally see would it be economically wise for myself to get this upgraded phone how I ended up deciding between the pro and the 14 was strictly money wise and down to the penny. So I personally like to keep my bill under $100. When I leased my phone through Sprint and LT Mobile, this was only an extra $28 I believe, so it brought me out to like $94 a month. When I was looking at the 14, it was gonna be $37.50 more a month and the Pro I believe was gonna be like 40 something. It was gonna end up being between like 103 and like 110, 112. And to many of you, you might be like, that's only a couple dollars, but honestly, I'm a real stickler for my budget. Look at my entire channel. So I decided to go with the 14 and just leave it at that. Another major reason why I stayed with the 14 is because honestly, like I don't want this phone to be stolen. Like, let's just put it out there. I'm not looking for somebody to be looking for my phone and just wanna snatch it off my hands because I'm gonna be guarding it with my life. I did make the mistake of not really looking up the different different colors in advance because when I saw Starlight I could have sworn it was like a this color like a cream or something and now every time I see the shipping details it says it's white and I'm kind of bummed because I don't know I don't really want a white phone anyway I'm gonna be putting it in a case so it doesn't truly matter but yes I got the white one and it should be on its way like right now now the big thing that I'm really worried about is the size. Like I said, I always usually do the minis. That's where I'm at. I live for this size phone and it is absolutely devastating that Apple was like, nah, you gotta shoot with the big dogs now. My hands are small. It's so much easier to fit in my back pocket and my bags, like this thing fits everywhere. I'm actually worried about how it is going to be holding a phone that much larger because I'm just not used to it. Another thing that I'm really, really, really focused on and I hope I made the right decision is the camera camera quality. So previously when I did my review on this, I had said that I loved the camera quality, everything was great. The selfie seemed like it was all good in the hood, but no, the selfie facing camera is horrific. Like when I'm doing self tapes, if you guys know I'm a professional dancer, I've got to do self tapes in my apartment. I like to see myself versus having the camera away from me and I don't know if I'm in frame or not. That quality is horrific. Like I'll show you some clips if I can find it, horrific. So the one thing I'm focused on and like it will determine if this was a giant waste or not is if that selfie facing camera is actually good quality. With the 12, I have the cameras being like this way and with the 14, I believe it's gonna be in the diagonal. Obviously with the 14 Pro, it was gonna be like three lenses. That's definitely one thing that I'm gonna be showing in this video later on to let you know right now if you're gonna be wasting your time. That would probably be the one thing that would make me go back to the store and do an exchange and then I would just go for the Pro. Here is my iPhone 12 mini. This is the case that I have always had. Um, it has a mirror because I'm vain. But most importantly, as you can see on the edges, it's like a bumper case. I do not ever get insurance on my phones. I know risky business and I've never had a problem. I've never had to pay that monthly fee. And this is my saving grace right here. Always had a protective screen on it. My hand, um, like just barely makes it. Even reaching for the delete button is a stretch for me. Like just not quite, like it just, it's actually work. And maybe it's just because I'm a lefty that it's harder. Here's the case I got. It's from a random Amazon name, the Romo. Now I got the iPhone 13 case. I read some reviews that were saying that the iPhone 13 case should fit the iPhone 14 case. Hey, there's me again. Mirror looks cute. Bumpers all around. Um, I've got some protective cases here, which is awesome. And now I actually can see how the phone will be when I have it. And as you can see, the one hand is gonna be a massive struggle. I'm, I'm getting an upgrade, that's for sure. That's how much of a difference it is so it's much longer with the leasing program with T-Mobile slash Sprint I just have to send this back 
um, once I get the new phone and then we're good and then I just start my new plan and that's it. I'm really hoping Apple does not let me down and that this phone ends up being exactly what I need, exactly what I want. I actually did not expect to be getting the phone on the 16th. I thought when I ordered it that it was going to be shipped out on the 16th so this was like a nice surprise to get a notification earlier this week that the phone was on the way. My phone finally came. Shout out to T-Mobile slash Sprint for the very unassuming box because I thought it was going to come in like a very like, hey, I'm a phone box, but like no one's going to suspect in this. So yeah, you guys, thank you so much. Came with my return kit. Here she is in all her glory. I don't hate the white in person as much as I thought, so that's really good. All right, so here's the phone with my case in. Am I crazy, but the top looks like it's a tight squeeze. <laughs> Are we struggling up here? Is it not fitting like perfectly? So I'm gonna be getting a new case because as you can see, the mirror is warped. I guess I didn't get the exact same one as last time. This eSIM thing is like really confusing. I don't know what's going on with my phone, but I was like, yeah, transfer the information over and it was like no phone numbers are allowed to do this. And then it was like transfer another way. And so I tried to do it by unlocking a code and my phone being near my original phone. And it was like, no numbers are associated. I don't know if my phone number transferred over. I just wish this was like all very straightforward because now I'm just like, huh? Why don't they tell you that it's a complicated process? Like, why don't they tell you like, hey, you're gonna have to call in because there's gonna be an issue. The eSIM to SIM thing like did not work. I had to call on my original phone, call T-Mobile. Now they're like, okay, turn off your phone. Do you have another phone so that um, we can make sure that it's still set up? I'm like, no, I'm. it's just me. I don't have another phone. I'm supposed to like wait five minutes while they do it on the back end of transferring my phone over and hope for the best because otherwise he said he's gonna call me back in five minutes and I'm hoping that this one rings and not that one. So I just like, I was like, is there any reason why you guys don't like put a little card in there so we know <laughs> that this is a whole process? T-Mobile would like to activate an eSIM on your device. <sighs> okay, it's set up. Okay, I'm just test calling my new phone. So <laughs> I'll, I can call you back later and actually chat, but I just want to make sure because it wasn't working before. The main thing that I was worried about, that reverse camera, uh, it still looks blurry to me. So either it's just my setup, either that's just how it is, or I just have to try 4K or something like that because it still gave a little bit of a blur. I don't know, but I bet you there's someone out here that knows the answer, so comment that down below. No, I'm not marching back up to the cell phone store and demanding a refund or exchange. Uh, I think it might be something deeper that I have to figure out on my own. I think I'm gonna be one of these people. I'm gonna be using my belt in my hands because this already does feel like a lot to moi. It is nice to see a bigger screen though, that's exciting. That is my video, that is my transition from iPhone 12 mini up to the iPhone 14, this is white, 256 gigs. I definitely wanna do a battery test, I think that'd be really fun to try out. So maybe I'll charge it up at the beginning of the day and see how long it lasts throughout the day. That would be something, comment down below if you wanna see that. My battery health for my other phone, which I find kind of interesting, is only at 84%, so like I said before, I had it for 18 months. It's only at 84%. It's in great condition. Hopefully it becomes a refurbished phone and then somebody out there that doesn't want to spend a lot of money can buy the refurbished instead. And then the cycle just keeps continuing. Thanks for coming along on this journey on my channel. If you want to see any more videos on budget lifestyle, take a look at the link in the description box. If you're interested in getting a notebook for my notebook collection line, I'll have the link down below. And if you want to watch a playlist on all the phones I previously had, that'll be down below as well. I thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.